Hi guys, today we're going to tackle a big one. We're going to be installing a subframe reinforcement kit from AKG Motorsports on a 2003 BMW E46 M3. These cars are notorious for having cracks in the rear subframe. This car actually isn't very bad. There's one tiny little crack in it, which is a first. Usually when you get these things, it's kind of a mess down here. But this is one of the cleaner ones where we've already pre-prepped the floor. Uh, took away all the sound deadening and undercoating and everything that's there and we have to put our plates in place and weld. We're going to do a tiny little stitch on one little crack that we have. We'll show you how to do that. Um, other than that, this one will be pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll give you a step by step. Basically what you need to do is prep the floor. So you check it for cracks first. One way to do that, take a propane torch, heat the area up. It usually will show the crack, the crack will expand. Uh, let's see if we can get you a better picture. So we have the floor right here. There's a tiny little line in it. As we take the propane torch, heat it up. The line kind of gets a little bit darker. And there's your little crack. So we'll stitch this, then grind it flush, put our plate on, weld the plate in place. Other than that, like I said, this car is pretty straightforward. No cracks on this side. No cracks in the back. Both sides of the back, pretty clean. So now that this one's all prepped and ready to go, we're gonna show you an easy way to put the plates in place. We use AKG Motorsports plates because they're much thicker than everybody else's. It actually uh, is a much stronger piece. And not saying that the other companies are inferior, They've worked for us. Everybody makes, you know, pretty good stuff, but we just find these to work better in our application. So basically the plate falls in place just like this. You're gonna weld it, stitch it all the way around. You're gonna bend it to close the gap, weld it all up. One way we do it to hold it in place, to prep it so we can weld it, take a simple BMW lug nut, or lug bolt in this case, large nut, screw it all in place. This one actually is too short. We're going to find one slightly longer. you have it held in place firmly get it over as far as you can so you close up this gap as much as you can the gap on this side typically but once we're done welding here and here we'll take a hammer knock this side down stitch it all up be perfect So now we're all ready to go and weld it in place. We're going to ground out our piece with the uh, welder. We're going to use a MIG welder. We use a Lincoln multi-process uh, 210 amp welder. Um, it works well for us. We've heard of some people uh, JB welding these plates into place. I don't know how well it works for them. I don't really know why you would do it instead of just welding it. It's like you go through all this much trouble. JB Weld just I don't know, it's not, it doesn't seem like a permanent fix. It seems like a temporary solution to a problem that I guess if you don't want to spend the money and you feel like crazy gluing your car together, then I guess you can. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna stitch it in a couple of spots. Make sure it fits perfectly before we continue welding. We got it all tacked in place. Once we're happy with everything, it looks good, it's in the right spot. We'll go ahead and finish up the welding. 
All right, so we got one all welded up in place. Got a good bead all the way around. The tops, the sides. So that's it. Relatively simple install, aside from some welding, a little bit of cleaning. Now you don't have to worry about your race car falling apart or a rear diff failure because you're toward the floor. Long run, this is definitely something you want to do. I've seen lots of cars being built with either inferior products or just don't have it. When you don't have it and the floor starts to break, it breaks this area, it starts to break all the way up into the uh, pocket where the spring is. This thing will go all the way up towards where the, the back seat is, it's in that area. And when you buy this, if you do break this thing and you have to replace it, it's sold with this whole section basically from the above the gas tank, which is basically where the seat, the rear seats sit all the way back through the spring perch, all the way to the rear floor. And when it does rip, it will rip this entire section up. I'll show you another car at another point that is beyond repair because somebody just didn't have the uh, correct parts installed. And even though it had a rear subframe reinforcement kit in it, it just wasn't a good one. And it failed and the car is now just a parts car. All right guys, I uh, hope this helps. We'll be doing a couple more of these videos in the future. Help a bunch of people out building race cars. You know, simple thing. All right, take care. Bye. So guys, we're going to show you what happens when you don't do your reinforcements on the rear subframe. This car actually had one installed. But like I said, you have to be, be wary of the inferior cheaper products. You got to go with a good company. AKG makes a really good one. I'm sure there's plenty of other good ones out there, but that's the best one that we've found so far. It works for us. So what we're looking at here is the rear trunk of an E46M. This section that we're staring at, this is the rear mount for the rear subframe. This is how bad it can get. When this part fails, it starts to rip the entire floor of the car. As you can see, both sides of this have failed it tore the floor and there's not much fixing this. Now, like I said, you have some that will extend the cracks all the way into the trunk of the car. This one pretty much isolated into this area. But what ends up happening is as you try to drive forward, the rear diff moves, pushes this up. As it pushes this up, it keeps extending this crack. As you can see right here in the seam sealer, it's hard to see, but you have this tiny little line. It's the continuation of these cracks. They will continue all the way up to the front. And like I said, this is where the fuel tank is. This rear seat sits here. It will start to rip this entire area as you, you know, this problem happens with these cars. It's common. So, you know, I, it's very rare that you'll find one of these things that doesn't have some sort of tear in the floor. doesn't matter who drove it, how they drove it, soft, hard, fast, whatever. It's all the same. Obviously, if you have someone who's been drifting the car or autocrossing or road racing the car, the failures are more likely to happen without the reinforcement and they will be catastrophic. This car was never raced. This is a street car. This is how bad it could get. All right, so we got one all welded up in place. Got a good beat all the way around. The tops, the sides. So that's it. Relatively simple install, aside from some welding, a little bit of cleaning. Now you don't have to worry about your race car falling apart or a rear diff failure because you're toward the floor. Long run, this is definitely something you want to do. I've seen lots of cars being built with either inferior products or just don't have it. When you don't have it and the floor starts to break, it breaks this area, it starts to break all the way up into the uh, pocket where the spring is. This thing will go all the way up towards where the, the back seat is, it's in that area. And when you buy this, if you do break this thing and you have to replace it, it's sold with this whole section basically from the above the gas tank, which is basically where the seat, the rear seats sit all the way back through the spring perch, all the way to the rear floor. And when it does rip, it will rip this entire section up. I'll show you another car at another point 
that is beyond repair because somebody just didn't have the uh, correct parts installed. And even though it had a rear subframe reinforcement kit in it, it just wasn't a good one. And it failed, and the car is now just a parts car. All right, guys, I uh, hope this helps. We'll be doing a couple more of these videos in the future. Hope a bunch of people out building race cars. You know, simple thing. All right, take care. Bye.